Hi everyone, I'm Jennifer Zarate and you're watching CRN TV. While the COVID-19 pandemic has disrupted election calendars across the country, state primaries continue to run to determine which candidates will go on the general election ballot on November 3rd, 2020. And here with me today is Ali Mellon, a security strategist at Cyber Reason to talk about election security. Thank you for joining me today, Ali. Thank you so much for having me. It's a pleasure to have you on. Now, what can you tell us about the work Cyber Reason has done around election security and what results have you seen? Yeah, over the past few years, we've worked really closely with the Secret Service, FBI, DHS, in order to improve our election security. And when we're thinking about this, we actually took a very different tack than a lot of people have. And we're looking at everything around election day that isn't that election infrastructure that we normally consider like voting machines um, like the polling places we're talking about what attackers can do to either um, sow disinformation the day of an election or stop voters from voting through things like taking control of the electric grid or stopping public transit and in these exercises we really put ethical hackers against law enforcement to get some results and see exactly what processes needed to be improved by law enforcement. And how do you handle disinformation, especially around deep fakes and or interference from nation states? Nation state attacks are something that we at Cyber Reason are really concerned about when it comes to the election and have come up a lot in these tabletop exercises. Uh, at the end of the day, the most important thing that we can do as individual citizens is to double and triple check the information that you're seeing. We need to make sure that we're not spreading information online that might have a very attractive headline, but in reality, it's all misinformation or disinformation. And while some uh, deep fake detection technologies are under development right now, they're just too early stage to be implemented by social media companies. However, the more that social media and communications companies can actually start to implement measures to prevent deep fakes from spreading and disinformation from spreading, the better off we'll be. And what does this mean for the channel? Election infrastructure is a multi-billion dollar industry um, already. And so what's really important to consider for the channel is that we need to protect election infrastructure no matter what part of the process it is whether it's distribution or manufacturing, every piece of that puzzle needs to be protected so that we don't accidentally build in some type of vulnerability that an attacker can take advantage of because they ultimately will. So from a technology standpoint, what standards need to be met? Culture is critical. And in the tech industry especially, we very much so have a culture of get things done quickly, get the features out there, we need to beat the competition, and that's the priority. And we can worry about robustness and security later. However, we can't necessarily do that in the government side of things, and especially not with election infrastructure, because election infrastructure needs to be consistent, and it needs to perform on one single day, and there's no taking that back. So there's kind of a clash here between the culture of the tech industry and the culture of the needs of the government that we need to address um, and make sure that the standards of the equipment that we're making is up to that point where we can safely say on election day, all the votes will be counted and they'll be accurate. So you mentioned how the tech industry has a culture of be the first to market and worry about security measures later. Now mix that with being in the midst of a global pandemic, is there cause for concern integrating such technology into elections? Iowa is a great example of what I'm concerned about here. And especially, so first of all, they did not have enough time to build that application. But they also did not have enough time to test that application or to actually give it to the poll workers to use. And we need to establish processes that give people time to get used to the technology that they're using. That's one of the reasons that we run these tabletop exercises is because it gives law enforcement an opportunity to experience election day before they actually have to experience it so they can be thinking about the different things that might happen. And we should really be having things like that 
for poll workers who have to use new technology.